I'm Bob Kenoda, and this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to crank it up. Dang it. Now what I mean when I say crank, I mean crankshaft. And when I say it, I mean the cylinder block. What I'm gonna do this episode is I'm gonna show you how I install the crankshaft in a Jaguar 5.3 liter V12 engine. It's a little touchy and you're gonna have to use some special tools. Now when you're installing the crankshaft, you gotta be really careful. Uh, if you're a big burly guy and can not only pick the crankshaft up, but in a very precise way set it in the block without damaging the the webs in the block or the bearings that you've installed in the block uh, what you really need to do is to get some sort of device like this chain hoist i'm using with an old engine leveler that i use specifically for this purpose and uh, it's a fairly easy operation but check all the way down that you're not interfering with anything that you might be damaging this is a critical time right here because these have to go between the crankshaft and the block in this position right here. These are the thrust washers or thrust bearings. These are the things that limit the amount of travel that the crankshaft can move back and forth. And these are often forgotten. You find these on the rack after you got the bottom end together and the sandwich and oil pans on. And then you got to take everything apart to get down to the point where you can put these things in. I actually had an engine that I pulled the pan off of and the mechanic, having discovered that they were not installed when they should have been, took and twisted them 90 degrees, threw them in the pan, assuming that somebody would think that some catastrophic event had occurred in order to kick these things out of these locations, which of course they can't once you got the cap on. So this is a really good time to make sure you got these. And these are new old stock units and a little bit tarnished, but they are in excellent condition and within spec. And um, the copper side goes against the crankshaft. And be sure that you use a good quality assembly lube. I use Cleavite copper side against the crank. You're going to have to take a pry bar and kick the crank one way or the other so that you can actually get it in. And then you're going to kick it the other way as far as you can get it. Then what you do is you put a dial indicator on the crankshaft and you kick it back and forth and see what the clearance or the end play of the crankshaft is. Installing the bearings in the bearing caps and also in the block is pretty simple, but there's some things you want to be careful of. First of all, where the bearing is going to seat, you want to make sure that that is, is scrupulously clean because any material that's in here that gets trapped in between the, the, uh, the bearing saddle and the bearing itself is going to affect the clearance between the bearing and the crankshaft. So that's important. And then also do the same thing to the, to the back side of the bearing, front side of the bearing. And then you'll notice that there's a little tab right here what that does is it fits in that groove right there. Uh, what that does is it prevents the bearing from rotating in the, in the block or in the cap. So just stick that in there and then just push it down. Make sure it's in straight, seat it all the way. And there you are. Before you install the bearing, you're going to take some assembly lube. Before you install the bearing cap, you're going to 
take some assembly lube and you're gonna spread it around inside there. Now you'll notice that this is the rear main bearing cap and you notice that there's some red stuff here. Well, the reason that we've got the red stuff there is that we need to make a seal in between the uh, inside of the engine and the outside of the engine. Now this is a later 5.3 engine and it uses one of these quote modern neoprene engine seals instead of the rope seal. It occurs to me at this point that I missed on the other engine a great opportunity to show you how to install a rear main seal but maybe next time. So that rubber that neoprene seal that you see there seals against the uh, the flywheel flange or the flex plate flange on the engine. The thing is though, it fits in here, but we have to seal this joint between the main bearing cap and the exterior of the engine. So what I do is take either Hylomar or Loctite 518, which is what I used in this situation, and uh, coat this area in the back of the bearing cap. What that does is it seals this joint between there and the exterior of the, uh, the rear main seal. Now, there's more here that really needs than really needs to be here. What you need to do is you need to seal between this channel right here, which you're gonna inject RTV down this channel and it's gonna go inside the block and outside the block, thereby sealing between the sides of the block and the side of the, of the bearing cap. Uh, so you really need just a small little streak of this stuff. between here and the exterior of the rear main seal shell. But given the consequences of this seal leaking, uh, I kind of overdo it a little bit. Now there's gonna be squeeze out, um, you know, in this area right here, but you can get the most of it still because you haven't put the rear seal or you haven't put the uh, seal in yet. So you can scrape that out but you really wanna make sure that it's not plugging up this channel here. So what I do when I get this cap installed is I'll take compressed air and I'll blow down this channel and it'll evacuate this stuff front to rear so that you got you can feel airflow coming out both of them. In some cases I will take, if there's any doubt, I'll take a fine wire, like a piece of 35,000s welding wire get in there and poke it around and then blow through it with compressed air again. So that's how we do that. And then we just need to repeat this six more times, but the others aren't gonna require this operation right here. It's pretty straightforward. One thing that I failed to mention during uh, the installation of the bearings was that the middle bearing where the thrust washers or thrust bearings go and at number seven, they have the same dimension bearings, but there's a big difference. The number seven bearing, or the one at the very rear, has a groove in it, top and bottom bearing shell. The one at number four is flat, both top and bottom. So that's important. You need to do that. I mean, this one is backed by the rear main seal. So anyway. That's just another thing that you need to be mindful of. I will say that when I first put my track car engine together, I got these swapped around. And as I was changing out bearings uh, after inspections, I didn't notice a big difference when I pulled these out. That's what they say regarding those bearings. So best to do it. Another important thing to remember is that you want to put oil on both the bolt and the washer, once you get the washers on, to reduce friction as you're torquing the nuts onto them. Don't forget these on the back side. 
And another thing, when you put the nuts on, you've got two sides. You got a smooth side and you got a side that has these markings all the way around. Um, I'm assuming that has something to do with the cat or the class of the of the nut. Same thing on the smaller ones as well. Smooth side, marked side. The marked side goes out. You want the smooth side against the washer. What I do after the installation of each cap is to put a torque wrench on the end of the crankshaft and note what the torque reading is. Now the thing is, with this engine, there is no rear main seal in yet. So really, there should be just about no torque required. Because you got, you know, between one and a half and two thousandths of an inch clearance back there. So there shouldn't be any, any drag you know, if there is, it won't even register on the needle, probably. Yeah, there's nothing there. So that's good. We know that we don't have an interference problem there. The problem with the 5.3 liter engine that has the rope seal back there is that there's going to be a certain amount of drag generated by that seal. Even though it's sized properly, there's going to be some drag there. And the problem with doing this operation, as I uh, just demonstrated, is that with that, it's going to take a certain amount of torque to pop that, you know, to overcome the stiction of the, of the seal onto the crankshaft. After you get that moving, there should be no more than 15 to 20 foot-pounds of torque necessary to keep that moving. Uh, the problem is that when you're pulling to get it free, what you can actually do is start take this end of the crank and start climbing up the bearing, and that jams it in the seal back there and and also the main bearing because remember we've got just a very small clearance if this thing is starting to come up on this end we could actually damage the bearing back there so what we want to do is ignore this reading just know that it should be between 15 and 20 foot pounds to begin with install the front bearing and then do our do our checks you know as we put the rest of them in front to back. Again, right about here, that's where those thrust uh, bearings have to go. Do not forget those. It will ruin your day, guaranteed. So we've got all the main bearings installed and everything looks really good. As I said, without a rear main seal in here, this thing should turn pretty free and it does and that's with between one and a half and two thousandths of an inch clearance between all the main bearings and uh, it always amazes me i mean one fifteen ten thousandths is smaller than a human hair and all of these bearings are lined up from front to back to the point where there's no drag whatsoever that i think is the power of having it a line board or a line honed in this case. So that's it for this episode. We got the cranks in both engines and we're gonna move on to the lubrication system, a really important part of the engine, particularly on the Jag V12. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, maybe leave some comments down below so that we can know what we can do to do what we do better. We'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicle.